This here is a waste oil burner. It has probably had about, at the maximum, 15 gallons of oil burnt through it. And the last time I built one of these waste oil burners, I cut inside of it to remove some of the metal that I needed for another project and I noticed a huge amount of buildup inside of this thing. So for anyone who ever planned on using one of these for something that's going to be needed for an extensive amount of time, this ought to be kind of interesting to see what type of buildup you can expect from burning synthetic motor oil. This is almost exclusively synthetic motor oil that's been burnt through this. Maybe a little bit of tranny oil. I try to avoid that due to the toxic gases they say are emitted from the combustion of transmission fluid, but for the most part, it's royal purple and Nissan ester oil. There is also some Valvoline in there, but um, I'm gonna cut this thing open and remove the vaporization coil because I feel it's clogged. It just seems like it's not blowing oil or fire the way it used to. And the oil line has kind of a pulsation feeling to it whenever it's operating. So that's telling me that the vaporization coil is filled with varnish. And I'm going to open it up and see what's going on. Okay, I ran out of data there, so I don't know if any of that last footage took. But um, this is under 20 gallons of waste oil. You can see the vaporization coil is insulated heavily by buildup. Almost like a good wrap from a hammer while it's running might have cleaned it out. That is just a huge clump of oily sludge. This thing is just completely caked up. Can't imagine what a hundred gallons would do. So if you ever build a waste oil burner and you have any plans of it operating at extensive periods of time, you're gonna have to design it where it can be easily cleaned. Like I said, beating on this with a hammer might have cleaned a lot of that out. I'm gonna go ahead and extract this vaporization coil, take a better look at it. It seems somewhat clogged. Kind of hard to see in there. Yeah, I'm having trouble here. Yeah, it is just a mess. Now I got the idea to do this because I, as I said, I took one apart a while back and it had like a huge pile of this stuff at the bottom of it. I've sent a lot of oil through that old device. I have videos on that one running. It is basically a propane tank, but I felt like I was wasting a lot of my fire inside the combustion chamber. So that's why I went to the smaller combustor. This one's extremely hard to get lit, but once you get it lit, it is more efficient as far as putting fire on something you want to burn. I've been using it to burn tree stumps out. And one of the main concerns I have with all this buildup is the fact that uh, it's cooling, it's insulating my container. I want this container to get extremely hot because that's what helps vaporize the oil. But apparently I'm not getting that benefit here. So maybe the vaporization coil is a better move. Because after a while, that could really start to inhibit operation. I need to find a way to make this thing run hotter to burn some of that stuff off. Because that is really sludgy stuff. Pretty interesting though. Taking stuff apart that you've built and seeing what's going on. That there is pretty much just a Venturi, an oxygen Ventura. 
I don't know how well it works. I tried to examine the differences of this Ventura being closed and open and I don't think I could see any significant visible effects. However, it's obviously pulling more oxygen into the flame, so it might have just been a waste of time, but I had to try it. The idea was there. I do have some footage somewhere of me alternating between closed and open. You would probably need a thermal couple set up to determine the effectiveness of something like that. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to try and pull that coil out of there now somehow. Not quite sure what the best way of doing that's going to be, but I've decided I don't want that in there. It seems it's varnishing up and getting clogged. The pulsations I'm getting from the injector pump are telling me this baby's clogging up. So I'm going to take it out and cut it open in a couple of spots and see how much varnishing took place on the interior walls of this copper coil. And here is the vaporization coil. I'm going to turn this light off. So. Not too much longer before this thing's just so insulated with gunk that it wouldn't even matter. That is a pretty gunked up coil for just 20 gallons. Right there is some crusty sludge from me overfilling the canister. Sometimes it would burn out and I would flood this thing with oil. Definitely interested to cut this thing open and see what type of varnish built up I ended up with. I think I'm going to take it. Well, I don't want to do that. I was going to burn this stuff off, but I don't want to alter the interior cavity by burning it. I'm just going to have to cut this dirty thing open and look at some sample pieces. There it is. The varnish that I almost knew was present. I had a hunch that this was happening. And for the amount that I've set through this thing, that's quite a bit. I see why they call it varnish now, or varnishing, because it is somewhat similar to like varnish you'd see on a table in consistency. It's cracky and flaky. Now a lot of this was basically disturbed when I cut this open. So we're probably not seeing the full extent of the problem here. I'm going to try it couple of more cuts and, and being very delicate to not disturb the true status of the interior of this tube but as you can see clearly it is suffering some significant varnishing which causes two problems first of all it impedes oil flow second it insulates the coil and reduces the vaporization power of the coil itself. So the oil isn't vaporizing the way it should be because I've got insulation on the outside of this and varnish on the inside. So for a while there, the oil was getting pretty hot maybe. Maybe it does still stay hot even though all this stuff is on here. Hard to say. We're, we're not getting over 405 degrees right here, I can tell you that. The fact that we have wet oil there means that we were staying under 500 degrees for sure because the flash point of this oil is 400 degrees so so anyway I'm gonna cut this piece open a little better and cut open a couple more sections of this thing and see what we got so yeah this puppy was varnishing up pretty good 
I wonder what it looks like before I get to vibrate to death with uh, I'm using a Dremel. Well, actually, it's not a Dremel. It's a Chinese knockoff that was not balanced. That thing vibrates so badly, I almost want to throw it in the trash. Yeah, man. We were headed down the road of serious problems. Now, I did connect an air hose to this and attempt to blow air through it. And from what I could feel, it did still have flow. Not as much as it used to. I'm not sure what the pulsation was on my pump. In case you didn't see any of the other videos, this is the pump setup that I had to use to run this thing. I know that looks a little elaborate, but this pump was incompatible with the job. It, its flow rate was just too high, so I had to run it at speeds that are very low. That is a G rotor pump. So with low RPMs, it's going to have a pulsating effect to it that you'll be able to feel. And I could feel the line kind of jumping with every pulse as if it was clogging up. And then on the initial few hours of running, it wasn't doing that. So definitely uh, something was feeling clogged up. And that, that's a fairly high pressure pump. I'm not sure how high of a pressure that thing can give, but I'd say it can do over 100 PSI easily. Anyway... See if we can scrape some of this stuff. It's fairly flimsy material that you could probably wash out. I'm curious as to whether or not it would dissolve. You could probably wash it out with a good high pressure rinse with some solvent, maybe some acetone. I'm not really interested in that right now, so I'm not going to see if it dissolves in acetone. In my experience, tars and varnishes are very tough stuff. They do not dissolve in gasoline and stuff like that very well at all. Not the way you would think they would. So, hard to say if flushing this thing out would have worked. My stainless steel connector connecting coils held up good. This is stainless steel wire. I was worried about whether or not them would hold. I'm going to go ahead and cut this open in a couple more spots. And the interesting thing about the amount of varnish we've seen right there is that that's coming right off the intake. So the residence time of this oil at this particular point in the coil is very low. What I'm going to do now is cut open this area right here, which is a higher residence time. And we should see a lot more varnish in that area which would probably be fairly consistent with what we're seeing here. This is a lower cool or lower temperature area. So it would have been able to condense on there a little better. Definitely tell you one thing. This stuff definitely would have clogged up the nozzle, the spray nozzle that I initially had on there. It was a very dumb idea of retrospect. stuff does flake off fairly easy I could see where it would become a big problem after gallons and gallons of oil have been run through I think I've seen enough I might do one cross-section cut take a look at that but uh, yeah I don't know what to think about that I don't know if this thing was in fact clogging up or what this was the discharge in there. Appears to have something in there. From now on, the oil will simply be injected at the very back and swooshed around by the blower, hopefully. <laughs> By the way, I can't get this particular model to run without this bung. This is required to get this thing lit. So I'm going to clean out the stuff in here and dump it in a pile. We're going to see the total buildup of runtime under 20 gallons. I, I 
would have to really look at the videos to find out exactly how much, but it's really not important. I know that it wasn't over 20 gallons, and in my opinion, something that can't run for 20 gallons worth of fuel without needing maintenance has a serious design flaw. So, or it's just a bad fuel in general to be using. Some of this did have some gas in it to spice it up a bit, but that was just for ignition purposes. I'll do like a 50-50 mix to get this thing fired up, gas and oil. So there you have it. The amount of buildup from a run under 20 gallons, probably around 14 or 15, but I'm not 100% positive. I didn't get quite all of it out of there, but I'm not going too crazy on this thing. I'm just going to let it run hot next time and pound on it a little bit. Taking that coil out. And we're going to see if it runs any different. So it will be kind of interesting to see the difference without the vaporization coil. I would imagine it's going to be almost the same. Because I have a theory that for the most part some of that varnish could have been caused from shutdown. Where when I shut down the device, a little bit of oil is still usually at the bottom of this thing enabling combustion. So it's possible that a lot of that varnish came from shutdown and the flame still continuing with the absence of oil flow in the coil, which could have brought the temperature way up and caused some issues. So maybe a special shutdown procedure would have saved that or made it last a little longer. Maybe turning the air off and leaving the oil on type thing or something till the flame extinguishes but uh, I'm not surprised to see this much stuff which this does not include the amount of material that was caked all over the vaporization coil so I'm not surprised at what I'm looking at here I was expecting this much at least I kind of thought it'd be a little more honestly based on my previous experience with my last burner but then again it had a lot more fuel sent through it so I want to weld this back together burn another stump out of the ground this thing would make a great steam generator if you were to use a flash boiler with it the heat this thing kicks off is incredible you can't even stand by it in some instances 